welcome to the Marimba Room. This is mine and my wife's music room, music studio, whatever you want to call it. Um, you'll hear a little bit of resonance. That is my marimba. Uh, I'm a percussionist uh, on the side, uh, metal detector if there's a hobby. I want to do a quick video about me as far as who I am. Uh, I've revamped my entire YouTube channel, and so everything's completely different. Uh, I used to have a lot of videos of uh, covers of all these different songs, a uh, couple of concerts, and I'm going to try to get those and put them on a separate channel down the road, but I wanted to try to gear this channel more towards metal detecting. I started metal detecting last year around Thanksgiving. My wife was kind enough to give me an early birthday gift, and uh, I chose at the time a Bounty Hunter Quick Draw 2. That was uh, what we could afford at the time. And I'm not knocking the machine. It did it did its oh, service. And my aunt got me a uh, Bounty Hunter Pain Pointer, which again, I'm not knocking the machine. They serve their purpose. But um, I uh, by this point, I have gotten new machines, uh, which I'm excited about, and I'll talk about in a second. Um, but I want to go over some of this year's finds. Uh, since I'm starting off this YouTube channel, I'm hoping by January more about the metal detecting from this point forward. Uh, so I think it's only right to talk about what I did in the past. So hopefully it won't be too long. Um, I want to kind of get this year in uh, review. Hopefully it doesn't get as many dislikes as uh, the YouTube Rewind. But <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll still go through it anyway. Uh, and I'll try to keep it as pr chronological as I can. I'm not going to go through every single find. Uh, but I do want to go through the ones that I thought were really cool. And um, by the way, when it comes to my change count and stuff like that, uh, I'm a music educator and my wife as well. And so a lot of the time I don't have time during the year to metal detect. Uh, I'm going to try to make more time for it. But I want to make sure my students come first. And so some of these totals are going to be really, really low compared to some. Um, so that's why I classify myself as a hobbyist as opposed to like a, a straight on enthusiast. I love it and I, I want to do it. But I want to make sure that my uh, my children, my students, succeed. But anyway, uh, starting the first week after I got my metal detector, the Bounty Hunter. This was one of the first things that I found. Uh, the lighting's not going to be that great. And I apologize for that. This is a 50 caliber shell casing. Uh, I found that when I was in Myrtle Beach. Thought it was one of the coolest finds at the time. I still, I mean, I still remember just because I, I, I didn't know. Turns out that Myrtle Beach, uh, along with many beaches apparently along the eastern uh, east coast, were training grounds for military. So that's how that ended up there. Um, and then shortly after that one, I found my first car, a little Ferrari. Um, I wasn't picturing, you know, that kind of find, but whenever I first got the detector, and you don't really think about these things, you know, a lot of times uh, the videos you see, you see like, oh, I found this silver coin, oh, I found this, and you don't really think about like the relics or uh, the very modern things that I assume a child probably with it, like probably a day before had lost this in the sand. Um, those were the two most notable from the beach, no rings, no nothing like that, because uh, a bounty hunter, quick draw two on a beach, uh, just makes a whole lot of noise once you get into the wet sand, so I mostly searched in the dry sand. Um, I was still very green at that point. I made it back home to West Virginia, which is where I was born and raised, uh, the southern part, more specifically Monroe County, and I started doing some hunting. I got permission to metal detect where I work, so, I started and uh, I found my first bicentennial quarter. Sadly, I don't have that anymore. I tried to take some of the, it ended up in the wrong pile and ended up being used towards uh, <laughs> money for the most recent Myrtle Beach trip that I had. So I don't have that to show. Uh, that was due to my own error, which I'm finding ways of better organizing. Um, but I found this. Uh, it is a. Matoya Hall token, the very first token I ever found. Uh, it's not going to focus too well, probably, but 
thought that was really cool. You can see the M. I could probably get better lighting. I'm not sure. Anyway, there's all that. And then this, which is a little Walmart ring. I thought that it was cool. But my camera's having tons of trouble focusing now. So I could probably turn it just slightly and ruin everything. But anyway, there's that. Um, no stamps. They're literally just a Walmart ring. So, but it was still cool. I was in that. You know, anything's a treasure at this point. This one, I didn't know that I had found this until probably three weeks ago. And I had went through, and there was a big, it's like a trash site or a dump site. Uh, I found it uh, near, right near where I live, like less than 60 yards from where I live. So, I mean, I need to get out and do that again. But right now, uh, we're still trying to get over Winter Storm Diego. And so, uh, right now, there's currently 13 inches of snow on the ground outside of my house. So, digging is not going to happen. Uh, anytime in the near future but um, found this uh, in that pile of stuff that I had brought home and it surprised me it is from the International Silver Company in Indonesia I guarantee it's probably just sterling silver plated but it shined up real nice uh, first spoon I ever found I know I found another one but I think if I, if I remember correctly uh, it was one of those stupid moments on my part and I picked it up and like left it right by the creek bank where I'd found it. So someday maybe I'll find <laughs> that very same spoon again. Um, then there was a long break, long break in between. Uh, I didn't get to hunt at all between January to the summer. And even then it was very few and far between. Uh, most of the stuff I found, found was like clad or uh, pennies stuff like that, bottle bottle caps, uh, pop tabs, yada yada. Um, so I went to the beach again, uh, and I had been trying to save up some in the event that I was ever able to upgrade. It was just kind of one of those things of I, I wanted I wanted so much to be have better equipment. And I had been doing research on like good detectors and I wish I had done more because I could have probably bought more within my means. Uh, last Thanksgiving, whenever I got the original one, but um, we're gonna we're gonna call that again. Attribute that to being very green in this subject, um, and we'll just move on <laughs> from there. But uh, I got to Myrtle Beach again, and prior to this, quick quick backstory uh, on this part, I had just went to a thrift store and found a bounty hunter thirty three hundred. Uh, or Bounty Hunter Discovery 3300 and was able to get it for 10 bucks and it was in brand new condition. Um, took that and took the disc or the uh, quick draw to, to the beach along with my pinpointer I had at the time. And while I was down there, I found a place that sold Garrett uh, equipment and I was able to also get a really good sale on a Mine Lab Xterra 505 which is what I am currently using. Um, the place that sold the Garrett stuff uh, was a pawn shop. They were authorized dealers. Uh, I checked into it and looked. I made sure because I know that there were counterfeits or there was something going on about counterfeit pinpointers. Um, and so I made the decision to go ahead and buy straight out the Mine Lab Xterra 505, which I know is still uh, in the I guess not intermediate class, but like right below it. Like it's it's still entry level, which is where I still am is entry level. And someday do I want to get something better? Absolutely. But for the amount of time I can put into it and for uh, the purpose I'm trying to use it for, I feel like I'm fine. Uh, I'd say Equinox is probably going to be my next step up. Equinox 600 or 800 is one of the two. Um, from what I hear, they're really good for all purpose metal detecting. Um, so we'll see. We'll see down the road. But anyway, back to where we're at now. Uh, I got that. I uh, went to the beach. Most of the beach was spent just trying to get used to the machine. Going from the Bounty Hunter to that was just a complete and total change. And it took uh, a couple of days. And then, of course, there was coastal flooding during Thanksgiving. And so I didn't get to do a whole lot 
because once again, the Xterra is not Xterra 505 is not fantastic in wet sand. Dry sand is great, and you can ground balance it to a certain degree. But once the ground is mineralized, it's just it's noisy and it, it picks up a lot of false positives. So got back home once again and started uh, asking permissions, which is something I never really got to do. And this is where a whole lot of my uh, First, as far as like, I, I don't even know if necessarily, I guess they're still falling into the category of relics, uh, came in. This was the very first one I found, and this was just recently, a um, hitching ring for a horse. And day after that, I found another one. Massive difference in size, but still, I thought those were really cool. Um, and then I also found this which I think is something for a fence or a gate I just like the shape of this one I know it's iron I know these things are iron but they're just still cool anything anytime you get to unearth something that was in use at some point from the ground I love that part I love that more than anything about it um, and then I found both of these not a single one of these were intact and they're not from the same one this one is a horseshoe and I'm almost positive that this one's a mule shoe uh, if you look at the difference in size it's pretty dramatic but again I don't know um, I'm hoping to get a book of course I don't even know if it'll have anything like that in it but uh, the digging Canuck and I guarantee I'm saying that wrong and if I am I'm sorry but uh, she had put on the ninth day of her Christmas advent thing about getting a book called relic quest so I'm hoping to get that soon I got a little bit of extra birthday money I'm 26 years old and still got some birthday money so I'm going to try to buy one of those books, and that way maybe I can better identify some of these things. Like the next thing I'm getting ready to show, I found my first button. Uh, the shank is broken. Uh, you probably can't even see that. There's something on it. I don't know what it is. It's got like, I think, nine dots. And I swore up and down, of course, I think it's my imagination, but I, I swore there was some kind of like line or something there. I don't know, but that was really cool. Um, I thought it was some kind of a copper. I thought it was a penny or something, but it was too big. But anyway, that was that was the first button I ever found. Um, and in that same day, that same day, I found my first wheat pennies that I ever found on a hunt. This would have been uh, not too long ago. This was December the second, and one is a nineteen fifty seven. And the other one is in 1958. And I found both of these. I was much smarter about uh, these firsts. And I put them in uh, little coin envelopes. But, uh, or the coin squares. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, I found them in the same hole. So I thought that was really cool. There was also a uh, 1959 memorial. But the wheat pennies, I was, I was super excited about that. Um found my very first key and this was in my last video uh, it's the atlas key. if you look at my last video you can see that a little bit more in focus my very first square nail and man like it was a big one uh, I was really impressed with this I found three others uh, not nearly as big and all of them were bent so if nothing else it proved that back then there was someone who was just as bad at driving a nail into something <laughs> as I am so, um, and then these last little, or the last one, I know I said that one was my first car, and it, and it was, but this was more of like what I was expecting <laughs> whenever I got into that, uh, into metal detecting. Um, and I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed getting this one and looking at the bottom of it and it, uh, all the information on it, made in England by Lesney, uh, Ford Cortina, which I didn't even know that existed, and uh, got to look that up. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, it's falling apart, but I, I enjoyed this one much more thoroughly. Uh, and of course, as I've said before uh, to a couple of different people, as long, you know, when you pull something out, at least the machine's working. But like, I love the finds like that. They just, those are the ones that, uh, that make me smile. And then uh, this one, still haven't dated it, but I've talked to a couple of people at my uh, church and uh, some people around who are more mature than I am. And uh, they said that they can remember seeing things like this as far back as the 50s. So I know sometime between the 50s to the 80s because 
Another friend of mine said that they had a friend that had one of these in the 80s. May have been passed down. I don't know. If, you, if you've ever seen anything like that or you know about... It, there's no brand. There's no nothing. Um, I know that it's got a hinge here. I, I thought about trying to put it into some penetrating oil and see if we can't get that open. Um, but I, I doubt there's going to be any kind of maker or manufacturing anything in it. But anyway... Uh, all together, those again, those were the more notable ones, uh, finds, the more notable finds that I had. I found a whopping three quarters, and these are all clad, uh, three quarters, six dimes. I found 45 pennies. I found six nickels, two wheat pennies, which were cool, and then no silver except for maybe the sterling silver on this uh, little spoon guy. So, all in all, not too bad. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing more of this, uh, trying to figure things out little by little. The video editing, you're gonna see, it's probably gonna be sloppy at first, but I'm trying, and I hope you know that. And again, as, as I said before, sometimes it's awkward talking to an audience that you don't know. I'll, I'll get better at it. I'll figure it out a little bit at a time. Uh, I may close the video out with just something simple on a marimba. I know a lot of people don't know what that instrument is, and that's totally fine. And man, does it look weird in reverse. Uh, <laughs> looking at it through here. So I might, I'm probably going to turn this around so that way it is the correct orientation. And I'll play something super simple. Uh, it's December, so I can play one of the Christmas tunes I've been working on, or at least part of it. And I'll end the video on that. But anyway... Thank you for sitting down with me. Hopefully, you didn't feel like I wasted your entire time. But I feel, I hope, if nothing else, you feel like you know me a little bit better. Uh, I know it's hard to subscribe to somebody that you don't really know. So, hopefully after this, uh, you're willing to go on a couple of adventures. I'm hoping to get another video up. But we'll just have to see. There's a lot going on as far as weather. And I've got a concert with my kids uh, in just a couple of weeks. My wife has a concert with her kids this week. And so we're just hoping church has a Christmas cantata. I might be playing this at one of the church services. So it's just finding time, maybe over the break. Uh, so fingers crossed. Uh, and until then, good luck and happy hunting. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I hope to be back with a new video soon.